just picking up the any object and going. And the host just sits back and roars. And for anyone that does that, because gets to do that, you're one of the luckiest situations in the world. But it's luck that you built. It's luck that you constructed because you did improv and you studied it and worked on it and you made it a muscle. A hundred percent. You worked with Robin Williams, right? Yes. And you were friends with him. He was he was a genius. Tell me, tell me, what do you, do you think that in his case and all all cases, but in his case, it was it it was very obvious to me how he was accessing the quantum field. Like he had a big yeah, totally. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Every improvised surprise. Uh, well, let, let's demystify it. There's pretty much no point in your existence when you're not doing that. I believe creativity. We channel it through our higher self. And I love that you're saying that it gives that egoic self a job to to actually kind of like ex be like, oh, look at me, look at me, right? Yeah, it's, it's how you get noticed is your ego. It's how you get around in showbiz in part, which is your ego. And the ego is always going, yeah, what about the rest of the credit? I mean, how come you keep taking them out? <laughs> right. But not me. Because all the pop psychology is against me, but I'm the one that got you the fucking job. I love that. Yes. And and we were talking earlier, Rick, and you were saying uh, uh, that you believe that we get the inspiration from the quantum field. And I was concerned that whenever I did a dark comedy bit in my stand-up, that I would be manifesting that reality that I'm speaking, even though I am I don't want it to happen. So I I think we were it was fun to see how we were looking at both ends of the process. So tell me, how do you feel about creativity and how do we quote unquote grab that from the quantum field? You know, as a comedian, uh, I we all dally dark at times. That's just going to naturally happen. But uh, eventually, it's like choosing your battles. You also choose your moral battles and the moral of the story battles. And how many bits should just be a bit and just get a laugh because it's funny. And as you get older, the more it's, do I want to be known for that bit now? The more I understand that there's a very complex dynamic around everything. And whether people consciously get it, that's not completely the whole story of what we're dealing with they subconsciously get lots of it and it guides how they laugh it guides if they ever want to pay a penny to see you ever again lots of things but it also is your spiritual path do you want to put your head on the pillow at night if you're neurodiverse adh any one of these it's that you have so much going on with your brain waves and with your body and the frequency and the emotions and the energy that when something's boring it's like it doesn't light you up like literally your frequency your emotion like if it doesn't then it doesn't but i think it's just such a special gift to have because then we yes. can make all these connections and it's looked at in the society right neurotypical society as a condition yes. or like something's wrong right. with you but it's right. not it's the total opposite thank and you i've always taught my son that so i just wanted to put that out there it's I love that. And listen to Crystal. That's what we should teach our kids. You know, it's it's actually a superpower. They it's like Thank it's you. a disability. No, it's not. No. It's a beautiful thing. It's amazing. ADHD people, we our creativity and the way we connect things that are not connected, it's insane. Yes. And just the energy of her love and like brightening someone's day and the whole kindness and keep the good energy go. It's like that makes such a huge difference. I can touch people, change lives, and it's a big like symptom of on the positive side, obviously, for ADHD. It takes a little time to create a gap between the witness and the mind. So we are the yeah. witness and the mind is outside. Once the gap is there, you're in for a great surprise that you are not the mind, i.e. the intrusive thoughts, that you are the witness you're yeah. the watcher thank god 
Do you, right? I was so relieved when I found out. I was like crying tears of joy and relief. Like, oh my gosh, I can stop beating myself up. This is amazing. You know how we create AI, right? And it's like a matrix of its own to serve us. Well, what if somebody or something or someone created us in a matrix where we first served them and now we're just on our own. Like, look, these people are screwed up. We're just going to leave them, you know, on their yeah. own. Think about that, right? I totally believe that. I mean, my, I joke around with my son all the time and I try to make jokes when I see weird stuff happening. I'm like, oh, we're, we're getting out of the matrix guy. And he's like, okay, mom. <laughs> yes, and I love on TikTok, there's like a lot of glitches in the matrix. Some of them are BS, but some of them you're like, what just happened? And you know, it's not an edit. In the quantum field, there's no right or wrong. It just is. It's our life. It's our perception. Like you said, um, perception is everything. It's, it's how we measure and, and do everything. And it, it does say she kept a low profile after that. But I'll say too, it's like, of course, the lawsuit's real. Like you said, the actions are alleged, but the lawsuit's are real because you can literally sue somebody for anything. It doesn't mean anything in our legal system, right?